Dwight D. Eisenhower had been president for about a year when I was born, and so as a child, he was the only president I knew until John F. Kennedy was elected. I for president, I for president, I for president, I for president, you like Ike, I like Ike, everybody likes Ike for president. Hang out the banner, beat the drum, we'll take Ike to Washington. He was born in Denison, Texas, but he moved back here with his family to Abilene uh, when Dwight was about 18 months old, so this is really the only home that he ever knew. Here in Abilene, when the children were growing up, it was uh, part of their daily ritual that every evening the family gathered in the home to read from the Bible. And each boy, there were six boys in the family, each boy had to take his turn reading. And it kind of became a competition for the boys to prove how well they could read and speak because they knew that as soon as they made a mistake, the Bible was passed to the next child to continue reading. So they were each kind of in competition to see how long each one could read before they made a mistake. And Eisenhower said that that really helped him when he started school because once he got to school, he already knew how to read and speak in front of others. He and his siblings grew up on what for some people was considered the wrong side of the, the tracks. Humble family, uh, very devout and loving, working together. That's one of the things that Eisenhower says that he remembers most is how much each of the children were needed. Each of the boys had responsibilities and uh, expectations from their parents that they would not only be responsible adults and good citizens, but would work together for uh, their own family as well as their community. He went on to the United States Military Academy at West Point, he graduated in 1915 as part of the class that the stars fell on because so many of them became generals. Eisenhower's first station after graduating from West Point was at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, and that's where he met Mamie Dowd. They had kind of a whirlwind courtship. They got engaged on Valentine's Day in 1916, and then were married in July of that same year. Eisenhower stayed in the military, uh, didn't serve overseas during World War I, but he ended up training troops in uh, Camp Meade in Maryland. Afterwards, he served on a, a commission, the American Battlefield Monument Commission, to study the battlefields of World War I. So that gave him lots of experience in Europe as he studied those battlefields. Then when World War II broke out, he started off in Washington, D.C. with the War Department, kind of strategic planning and then was selected by uh, General Marshall to lead troops in Europe and uh, started in Northern Africa and worked his way north and then was instrumental in planning the invasion of Normandy. So from that point on, he was a uh, world hero. Um, he did go on to, to serve as president of Columbia University for a while and then um, once again was called when he was serving with the uh, NATO forces in Europe. He was called back to campaign in 1952 for president and at that time he accepted the Republican Party nomination. Uh, won easily and went on to serve two terms as, as president. After two terms as president, he retired to his family farm, the farm that he and Mamie purchased uh, in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and uh, still considered a uh, statesman and a, a diplomat. Uh, presidents came and asked his advice, other uh, leaders. Dwight Eisenhower was a good citizen. He did what his country needed. He showed that he stood for justice and the rule of law when he handled the Little Rock integration crisis in 1957. He led our country with vision about the interstate highway system and uh, 
space program and many other ways. General Eisenhower was my dad's commanding officer when dad was in the army during World War II and Eisenhower was supreme commander in Europe. That's a special connection. One of the things that I find so encouraging about the life of Dwight Eisenhower is that he learned faith at the knees of his parents. And though he did not live that faith out powerfully during part of his adulthood, as he became older, he went back to that faith. And I think that's such an encouragement to mothers and daddies to know that what was instilled in him as a child became powerfully important to him later in his life. We got to get where we are going. Travel day and night for president. Let Adelaide go the other way. We'll all go with I. You like I, I like I. Everybody likes I for president. Hang out the banner, beat the drum. We'll take I to Washington.